Typically in Jira, only folks with project access can add work items. There is, however, a feature that can let you collect work items from folks outside your project. I'll show you how. Jira Forms is a feature that lets you get work items from folks who don't have direct project access. Now, this is incredibly useful, as you might have stakeholders who don't have direct access to the Jira project, or maybe you have customers who you need to solicit information from, and you don't want to give them direct access to Jira. This feature lets you do that. Essentially, it lets you put together a small web page that includes various fields from your project that they can then fill in. Additionally, you'll have the ability to make individual fields mandatory or not, and to add conditional logic. For example, if they select a certain priority, have another field pop up, but if they don't select that priority, that field doesn't appear. There are some limitations. The only fields you can add are ones available in your project. So you might have to work with your Jira admin to add additional ones if you need them. However, this feature does give you some additional flexibility. You will be able to collect these work items from folks who don't have direct project access. Now you might be thinking this sounds really similar to a thing called an issue collector, and you're not wrong. However, Jira forms are a lot easier to use. You just send someone a hyperlink, and they look much nicer than the old issue collectors do. The other thing you need to know about them is they are different than the forms in Jira Service Management. Jira Service Management lets agents and admins put together a form to collect information, and those forms in JSM can have additional fields and more features. So the Jira forms I'm going to show you are only in Jira, what they used to call Jira software, but they do give you some great flexibility for collecting work items from outside your project. So now that we know a bit about them, let's jump on in and see what Jira forms look like. Here we are in Jira Cloud Premium, and to use this feature, I just need to go find a project. Now keep in mind, it should not be a Jira service management project, because the way JSM uses forms is different than how Jira uses them. So here I'll open up my project, and I'm going to look for the forms menu. When I first open this, it will be blank. There are no forms listed. I can, however, create a blank form or use these various templates. In this example, I'll use the bug template. And here I can see my form. This again is the template one, but I can go in and do things like change the work item type that will be used. I can change the name, as well as the description that someone sees. And I have an editor that looks very similar to a Confluence page with a lot of formatting options, including things like some elements that I can use to make this more visually appealing. Next, I have all of the fields. Now again, the fields that I can select are limited to what are available in the project. So unlike a Jira service management form, I cannot make additional fields that will be attached as text. I can, however, just click and drag a field to add it to my form, and then I can click and drag to control where it appears on the screen. Next, I can change the description of the field. This is important because it will help the person filling it out understand what should go in here. Now, I can also make fields mandatory or not. Summary is always required. However, other fields, I can click this rocker to mark it as required, and you'll see a little red asterisk appear. In addition to making fields required, I can also add conditions, and these will make fields pop up if specific values are selected. For example, if this is a super critical or a critical bug and someone selects those values, I could have the attachments field pop up and I can make it required. I can add an additional condition where if it is some other value, maybe high or medium, I have components pop up. Now exactly what you have here will depend on your project and your available fields, but this gives you some ability to control the flow of this particular form. So you can solicit specific pieces of information if you need them based on the value of some other field. Note that the ability to have conditional branching like this is dependent on the field type. So I can't do this for description or fields like components, but where I have drop downs, for example, priority, I can add these conditions. Oh, excuse me to interrupt. If you like this, please hit that little like button down below. It's a thumbs up. It lets me know you like the video, but helps other people find it and a super simple way to support me. Thanks. And let's get back to it. Now up at the top, I can control who can access this form. By default, access will be limited to folks who can already access this project. So this means people who can already push create. I might choose to use a form in this case to make the entry process a little bit nicer and easier to look at. Plus I have that conditional branching I can include here that I can't easily include on the create button. Next, I can make this open to anyone with access to my Jira instance. This can be incredibly useful. 
especially if I have stakeholders who don't have direct project access or who I don't want to have push that create button because it could be confusing. And again, the ability to guide them with that conditional branching and changing the description and help text on the field can make their experience much, much easier. And last, I can open this up to anyone on the internet. Now, if I do this, I have to select a default reporter. For example, my admin administrator here. Now, there are some important things to understand about this public access. There are some restricted fields, for example, assignee, attachment people, etc., that will not show up on public forums. And this is to help ensure we don't accidentally leak anything sensitive. Check out a link in the description for a full list of these. But otherwise, this is a way you can collect information from just anyone. Again, this is not using Jira service management. So this is a way your team can collect information from public customers, etc. This also does require that public link access is turned on by your admin. So it is possible that this has been disabled and you won't be able to select public. And the other thing about these is there will be a field inserted asking for someone's email. So they'll be able to provide an email address to communicate with you. In this example, I'll leave this form public. And then I'll get this reminder that if this is being made public, it can be accessible by anyone. And also if there are IP allow list restrictions, it can only be viewed by people on that allow list. So there might be some additional administrative hurdles you need to go through. Now, because this form was made public, you'll notice that this list of restricted fields has appeared and I'll be unable to add them. So again, I cannot add things like a signee or fix version because it's public. Next, I have the ability to share the form. And here I can share it directly with anyone in my instance, or I can click this copy link. Additionally, if Slack is integrated, I can click on share in Slack to share it. I can also preview what the form will look like. So this is what the public link will look like when someone comes to add it. And then I can test out the form. Keep in mind that because this form is public, some of those fields I added for the conditional logic may not be appearing. So Jira is protecting me from accidentally exposing anything sensitive. But once I click submit, my request will be added into that project. And last, I have some information like a tutorial, feedback, disabling the form and deleting it. Once I'm done with this form, I can go back to the forms menu and I'll see a list of all the forms in this project. I can visually see the work item type it creates and its type of access, and then access more actions directly from here. And then if I need to, I can create a brand new form either from scratch or based on my template. So that's Jira Forms. For me, this is a step towards Jira service management in that I now have a way to solicit information from the public or from people not in my project. This can be very powerful and give us new ways to collect information about what's going on. It's also a nice upgrade from the old issue collectors, which seemed a bit clunky and were a little bit hard to use. They allowed us to do something similar, but the process and the feel wasn't as nice as this is. The ability to have that conditional branching too can make it very easy to guide someone through the submission process, which historically has been hard in Jira because the create menu can be cluttered. There can just be a lot of stuff. Keep in mind the restrictions though. If you make it publicly accessible, you won't be able to use every field and only admins can create these. So if you're not a project admin, you'll have to go work with one to generate it. Additionally, if you do make it public, it means anyone with a link can put in work items. So you are exposing the project in that sense. All they can do is put in information though. So Jira will do its best to protect you from sending sensitive information out, but when it is public, it is accessible. And the last restriction to keep in mind is you cannot add new fields like you can in a Jira service management form. You're stuck with whatever's available in the project. So you'd have to work with a Jira admin to add more fields. So those are Jira forms. I'm really curious what you think about them though. What kind of use cases can you think up with this type of feature? Drop me a comment down below or join us in Discord. I've got a great community where we share information about stuff like this. Check out the link uh, somewhere up here. If you like this, please like it. That helps other people find it. Also lets me know you're interested in this kind of content and please subscribe if you hadn't. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed learning with me. I love looking into features like this and I hope to hear from you on how you use them. So thanks again and I'll see you in another one of these soon. Me again, thank you so much for watching that video. Check out more here and pop down into the description. I've got a blog with weekly content. I also have a lot of online learning on Atlassian stuff and project management. And if you need personalized training for you and your team, reach out and let me know. I'll be happy to get something set up for you. Thanks again for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again soon.